I made it. This has been a fairly long day. I've done a lot of walking and I don't know if you can see quite how much sweat I have on my head. But I'm gonna take a shower, I'm gonna go to sleep, and then tomorrow, we're off to Disneyland! Well, it's the next day, I managed to take a shower last night. I'm now changed, I had some breakfast, I have rehydrated, and I am all ready to go. I've got my ticket for Disneyland, it is 8.30 in the morning. It's gonna take me about half an hour, 40 minutes to get there. So I should arrive at about 10 past nine, a good 50 minutes before park open. Which means I should be able to get in fairly early, which is important in order to do a couple of rides early on. So let's see how all of this goes. It's now 9.05, 55 minutes before park open. We're about to pass through the Disneyland Hotel is right in front of me at the moment. You can probably see it right there. I don't know if they're gonna let us in just yet. Hopefully they will do a rope drop and then we can all sort of go in. It is gonna be a bit of a wait because the park doesn't actually open for another hour unless you're staying at one of the Disney hotels, in which case I think they start letting you in now. All right, so it's 9.33 and I'm in. Let this be a lesson. Get to a Disney park early. I got an hour. I got here an hour before the park opened and I'm in half an hour before it's meant to open. And I really should start running to Tomorrowland because I want to go on Star Tours and Space Mountain because they were both closed last time I was here. So they let us in half an hour early. They still have ropes up and they're checking that people are staying at a hotel in order to let you in. So I'm just gonna have to enjoy the ambience and the, uh, the vibe here for a little while and then rush on over to Space Mountain over there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these statues are new. Maybe I just don't remember them from last time I was here. They do look very different to the Disneyland ones that I'm used to. Some nice and metallic Mickey and Minnie and their kids, Donald and Daisy and Goofy and Pluto and Tinkerbell. Everyone's on a first name basis here at Disneyland, even the horses. Uh, so here's one other tip. I'm currently in the middle of the circle right here and it's actually elevated. So if you want to get a good shot of the castle, make sure to come to, to this spot because it will give you the best view as people here taking photos all over the place and that's fine. The only problem is the sun's right behind me and it's getting in my eyes. So it looks like rope drop is about to happen any second now. Not to run, but I'm gonna run. So this is not Tomorrowland, like Discovery Land in Paris. It's already full of people because they stayed at the hotel, and I'm gonna head over to not Space Mountain, but Hyper Space Mountain because it's been rethemed for Star Wars. I've not been on that one yet. I'm really keen to give it a go. Here we go. Oh, they have single rider. That is the best. Fast pass tickets. 10.35 to 11.05. Yeah, I think I might go for that. Where do I get my fast pass tickets? Somewhere over here. Like the Space Mountain. I'll let you know how it goes. So I got my fast pass. 10.40 return for Hyperspace Mountain. I'm now at the start because I then immediately went on the single rider queue. It's a five minute wait, 30 minute wait for standby. Hopefully I can do this, then maybe hit up Star Toys and then come back and do uh, Hyperspace Mountain again with my fast pass. Right, 
to go. Yeah, it was pretty intense. I like it. Uh, it reminds me of a lot of rock and roller coaster. It is the only space mountain in the world, I'm told, that has inversions uh, and it does launch you really quickly at the start. And best of all, it's Star Wars themed. So I've just gotten off one Star Wars theme ride and about to get on another. Star Tours, baby. With a bit of C-3PO and R2-D2 action. And like all modern Disney rides, we have to exit through the Star Wars store with all the merchandise. Uh, I really enjoy Star Tours. One of the things I like about it is that every time it's slightly different. Um, this time we had the Falcon at the start, we went to Hoth, we saw Princess Leia, and then we had Boba Fett at the Death Star to, to finish off. Um, this ride as well was closed last time I came earlier this year, just like Space Mountain. So it's really nice to start the day with two Star Wars rides. And I think they must have just updated this one to the, the new Star Tours rather than the old one. Um, and uh, it really does feel like the new one, they do change it over time because I don't remember seeing the Falcon before. But I did this time. So I've now been on the two Star Wars rides that were closed when I came here in February, but there's one more ride that was closed that I want to go on. That is Pirates of the Caribbean. This is the new version. They've, uh, I guess controversially removed the slave auction scene. It's now uh, a more uh, less historically correct but less offensive replacement of a female pirate. And this is apparently the first Pirates of the Caribbean anywhere in the world to get the update. All the others are getting it soon. So there's no fast pass or single rider line for Pirates of the Caribbean. You just have to get in the standby line. And it's a 45 minute wait. I'm about 20 minutes into it. And I don't know, I think the start of the ride is a little bit closer than 25 minutes away. Like we are getting very close now. And we're in sort of the, the last area. You can't really see it very well, but it's very themed around here. And the loading zone is literally just in front of me. But you know Disney, they can probably make us weave around some sort of a labyrinth around here wouldn't be surprised but it is the last of the three rides i didn't get a chance to go on last time so i really want to get a chance to go on that they tell us you will get wet <laughs> it's quite hot so that's good <laughs> Well, the ride said we'd get wet, so I put my jacket on, but I didn't get wet. Now it's hot. Story of my life. <laughs> So it feels like I've been here for about an hour in reality. It's been three hours since I started going on rides, four hours since I got here to line up. The day is going really quickly. Next up, I'm gonna try and get a photo or video of Alice in Wonderland. This is where Alice is going to be in about 15 minutes, so I'm just going to join the back of the line and hope it's not too long a wait for she does get here. Hello, Alice. Hello. 
I was wondering if I could ask you a favor. Yes. See, my fiance Denise, she's a big fan and she wanted to come and say hello, but unfortunately she wasn't able to make it to Wonderland. Okay. So I was wondering if it would be possible for you to maybe invite Denise to one of your tea parties. Oh, of course I can. Am I going to speak through this rabbit yes. hole? Okay, well, I maybe come up here because I feel like... Well, hello, Denise. I heard you couldn't make it today, but I want to invite you to a very special tea party with me, Matt Hatter, and the March Hare, okay? We're going to have lots of curiosity, positivity, and yes. Well, bye-bye, and I'll see you soon, okay? So importantly, Disneyland Paris doesn't have a Tomorrowland. This is technically Discoveryland, I think it's called. I still call it Tomorrowland, but it's not based on the future. It's actually based on... Uh, the future as envisaged from the past. So it's got a bit of a steampunk feel. It's based on sort of Jules Verne, and his view of what the future was going to be like, um, which I believe is sort of a 19th century view on the 20th and 21st century. The good thing about that is it kind of makes it timeless because if you go to some of the other Tomorrowlands around the world, they feel very 1970s, like they're straight out of the Jetsons, um, which, as we know, is not how we live. Uh, as I walk down Main Street, one thing that a lot of people don't realise is that the shops on either side have things written on the windows and those things are effectively the credits as you would find at the start of a movie. But as you look on either side, for example on the right, uh, we have Roy and Walt Disney, the Disney brothers, and they're put down as the founders, whereas on the other side uh, you've got Frank Wells and Michael Eisner, who are said to be the conductors leading since 1884. The date is quite important because Michael Eisner and Frank Wells were the heads of the Walt Disney Company starting in 1984 and were the heads when this park opened about 10 years later so that's no mistake. And then a little bit later just here on the right the Main Street Gazette we have uh, Marty Scalar and Tony Baxter and this is actually quite an interesting timing for that because Marty Scalar was one of the what's called Imagineers. Um, engineers with imagination. They're the people who design all the rides and the theme parks for Disney and Marty Scalar was involved from the very first theme park Disneyland in 1955. Worked with Walt Disney and was involved in every single Disney theme park since all the way up to Shanghai Disney a few years ago and he passed away earlier this month. You'll find that at pretty much every main street at every Disney park you go to but there's one big difference between this Disney theme park and all the others and that is at the end of the main street. And if you look behind me there you see you know you've got the castle but in front of the castle there is no partners statues. You do find those at Disneyland Paris but you won't find that here. To do that you've got to head back out that way and head over into the Walt Disney Studios Park where as soon as you walk in you will notice statue of Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney is the only Disney resort in the world where you will find this statue outside of the principal park by the Disneyland or Magic Kingdom Park. Alright, so I just did the tram tour. I never got a chance to do it at Disney World at Hollywood Studios because they shut it down a little while back and I've done it once and I think once is the right number of times to do it. I'm not even sure if once was worth doing, to be honest. Um, it's pretty missable. But had some, yeah, I got to sit down. <laughs> it was in the shade. Uh, some explosions. One of the baby behind me was crying when they had the dragon fire coming out. And that means I can now go, I don't know, ride Rock and Roller Coaster or Crusher's Coaster. Seems like the Rock and Roller Coaster gods are looking on me favorably today. It is a 10 minute wait to get in. I'm not even gonna bother with a fast pass. Just head on in and ride this. Maybe a couple of times. Oh yeah!
time for my second park hop. I'm leaving Walt Disney Studios and heading back to Disneyland Park over there. And really importantly, the clouds are out. It's a little bit overcast. It's been really sunny, which is great, but it was getting really hot and I'm starting to smell from, from sweat. So it's nice to have a little bit of a cool change. I just hope it doesn't start to rain. This is nice. I hope it stays this way. I really do. Although if it rains, maybe people might leave. That would be good. There's a lot of people leaving Disneyland Park. It feels like I'm doing the wrong thing. I, I, I worked out why so many people were leaving as I was coming in. The parade just finished, of course. So all these people who would have left, but couldn't for half an hour because the parade was coming through, all took the opportunity to leave together at the same time. I still think there's a lot of people in here. So it was a bit of an exaggeration of exactly how many people had left. I mean, look for yourself. The place is pretty full. If I could make one of my complaints about Paris's Disneyland Park, is that in all the other Disneyland parks, this is the only way you can go in. Through the right side, or right over there on the left, Paris has this central entrance way. And I've got a problem with that for one big reason, which you'll see as I walk through. And that is that normally, this middle entrance is meant to be blocked. So as you walk through, you don't get this view with the castle just there in the background that you can see. It's meant to be a reveal. You don't see it. You go through the side, you see Main Street, you walk to the center of Main Street, and there, finally, you get to see the castle. Uh, I don't know why they do it this way. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's something that I like about the design and the style of every other Disney, Disneyland Magic Kingdom park I've been to. Of course, once you're in, you're in, you know. Can't really complain about this. Oh, the wonders of being on Main Street USA in Disneyland. All right, it's time for the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, as I like to call it. The teacups ride. Oh, it's a classic Disney. So just quietly, it's really hard, really hard to spin your own teacup on your own. Even harder when you're trying to film yourself, so enjoyable. I need a co-pilot or a director of photography. It's what you get for coming to Disneyland on your own, hey? So I accidentally purely by luck stumbled into the cable car bake shop. I'd only seen the name bake shop up until now, but I love, love, love the, the way it's all decked out with cable cars and trams and all this historic San Francisco memorabilia from around 1900 or so. Beautiful, love it. I don't know if you can see that, it's Donald Duck. Big fan of the Donald Duck, that is. Uh, I should point out, I'm wearing a Daffy Duck t-shirt. And I've worn this t-shirt to every Disney theme park I've been to. And every time I visit a Disney theme park, I need to wear this shirt at least once. And that comes from my first visit to Disneyland, which was for one day, and I wore this shirt. Um, and it's a bit of an ironic trend that I continue doing through to this day. Even though I've actually got a Daffy Duck shirt. But I didn't wear that. No, sorry, I've got a Donald Duck shirt. Obviously, I have a Daffy Duck shirt. I've got a Donald Duck shirt, but I don't wear that one religiously to Disney theme parks. I wear this one. All right, it's 9.30 p.m. Something has happened to me that has never happened at a Disney park before, and that is I've run out of things that I want to do. I can go on Star Tours, I can go on Hyperspace Mountain, I can go on Indiana Jones, but I just don't want to queue up for them. Um, and so I'm just going to sit down and have something to eat or drink. And I've got to remember that this is day 24 of a 25 day holiday. It's the last full day that I am somewhere. 
I'm just fatigued and almost ready to go home. So I've had a great day. I'm gonna have a bit of a break, maybe go on one more ride and then watch the fireworks and the light show. I'm not gonna include that on here. I'm just gonna enjoy it for myself. So enjoy some time lapses I took of the castle from earlier today as a bit of a compensation for that. I've had a great time. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.